Former President Bill Clinton is giving his fellow Democrats a harsh reality check. Clinton says the economy is not in a great place and Democrats need to stop claiming otherwise. I would say two things. I'd say we can't keep asserting that things are great in the economy. In some senses, they are great. But first of all, we're saddled with some cost of living challenges, which are not unique to the United States. But it's pretty hard if you're out there in the middle of the country and you're working hard and you've got two or three kids and you have to watch every penny you make. And, and secondly, the economic benefits of the current recovery have been widely shared where it has stuck. All right. The Democratic Party has fallen at the coconut tree. I couldn't wait to make a video on this. Oh, I've been, man, I told you, I've been, I've been, I've, man, I've been so excited. Man, I've been over here just, whew, I can't wait. I can't wait, man. I just can't wait. Oh, Bill, they didn't got Bill off the island. They said that, did he really just say what I think he just said? You know, they, they, they trying to make this fella important. The most irrelevant. Bill Clinton, y'all. And again, I, I told you what it was when they sent him out there and he made the biggest campaign, one of the biggest campaign ads for Trump. You know? Lincoln, Lincoln Riley would have never took in place. When he said that, I, I said, boy, whoo! And now he, I hear it he does, again. You just can't make this up, and I'm here for it, y'all. You just can't make this up, man. But like I tell you, the whole Democratic Party has fallen out the coconut tree. They uh, point fingers, blaming each other. They didn't, and then blame him. He didn't drop the sprinkles on the floor. Ice cream still on the floor is sticky. Unbelievable. You know, they point fingers at each other. Oh, and then she didn't have enough time. Oh, she didn't answer the questions. Uh, 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 uh. Oh, I think everybody's racist. Oh, they're not educated. Oh, they don't have college degrees. Oh, yeah. Wait a minute, we should have never called him Hitler. Oh. <laughs> Wait a minute, we should have toned it down. Oh. Yeah, and now you see the ratings have tanked. Fake news, CNN, MSNBC, all of them. ABS, CBS, Hollywood, them celebrities. People want their money back. People are mad, hitting the wall, shaving their hair off. Oh boy, this is, I tell you, these last two to three weeks, Oh, God is amazing. God is good. God ain't done yet. Glory to the kingdom, baby. God bless them beautiful patients around the world. I love y'all. And I'm glad that I, I'm, I get to come on here and just keep it real with y'all, man. I know some of y'all be laughing at me. And this is like a, com a comedy show almost every video. But I got to keep it real. Because ain't nobody doing what we doing on here. I ain't coming on here like a smart guru breaking stuff down. It's just common sense. Common sense. And we need common sense to be great again. That's all. We need America to be great again. Simple, you know, but I tell you right now, Bill Clinton don't care about uh, people living paycheck to paycheck. He don't care about them patriots, but I just couldn't wait. I, I Again, we can't wait to call. We just couldn't wait to call this out. Y'all. I couldn't wait to get into this video. I, I really couldn't, you know, you know, the Pentagon fell in seven audits, you know, can't account for three for trillions of dollars. You know, I mean, we just can't make this up. They ought to be ashamed of themselves. They, I, I really, they, they ought to be ashamed of themselves, man. All of them. You know, uh, let's jump into this, man. Clinton giving his party the cold, hard truth on why they lost in such a humiliating fashion. And to borrow a phrase from his successful 92 campaign, it's the economy, stupid. We can't keep asserting that things are great in the economy. In some senses, they are great, but it's pretty hard if you're out there in the middle of the country and you're working hard and you've got two or three kids and you have to watch every penny you make. There's a lot of identity conflicts racing through our society now and through our world. And these culture wars topics still have enormous salience. And we Democrats have to learn to talk to people. <laughs> and Bill Clinton, ever the expert on women, Claims America is ready for a female president, but there's a catch. Yep. I think it would probably be easier 
for a conservative Republican woman to win. Than a Democrat woman. Because. Pretty sure we can all agree on that. Damn right a conservative woman. I mean, that's what Maggie Thatcher did. But I, I still think we'll have a woman, female president pretty soon. He, he didn't really explain why. He just said Margaret Thatcher. Why do you think Bill Clinton doesn't think we're going to have a female Democrat president? I think because he realizes where the country is right now because he saw what happened in this election. He knows that the country is more right than it was when he was president. And Maggie Thatcher was a tough, straight-talking, conservative woman, friend, obviously, uh, if you remember, of Ronald Reagan. And, uh, you know, I just think that conservative women don't focus on nonsense. I think they're just smarter. In your face, Mark Cuban. Okay? Uh, but even more than that, I think that when he was stumping for Kamala Clinton, he said things now, you could say he slipped because he's older, but what he said was basically, um, you know, w they weren't vetting people, which is why Lake and Riley was killed. He basically said that the economy was better under Trump, uh, recognizing that it wasn't that good under oh, Biden duh. and Harris. Oh, and, um, you know, he was um, I, I think he was very straightforward. And he knew when he was president, he had to change things that he listened that the Democrats today are not listening. And, you know, I, I got to give him credit. I think he's right. I think the first woman president will be a conservative. What do you think, Greg? Uh, I think what he was saying is kind of like what the judge said. It's not it, the gender thing is not important. It's about the other part that describes it conservative. Uh, if, if anybody liberal is right now is in trouble because they went too far left. But I like what he said when he said we need to talk to people because I think he realizes and it's probably from being a, among Democrats and younger ones, really young ones, that they talk at people or they're talking at each other. They lack the persuasive skills. But, and they alienate people. They drive them away, perhaps because maybe their ideas aren't good. We know that. But they're also not they're not being taught how to win friends and influence people. Instead, they're finding value in alienating and, and losing friends. There's a reason why identity politics failed. It wasn't about it wasn't about other people. It was about you and the secret to success in life. And anybody who's read uh, Win Friends and, and uh, Influence People, you win by asking about other people, what's interesting in their lives. People love it when you ask them about their lives. They're not interested in your pronouns. They're not interested in your identity, and that cuts people off. The other thing is Dems love to say uh, we need to have a conversation, but that's usually to get out of the current one. The kryptonite has always been a follow-up question. Once they learn how to, how to deal with a follow-up question, they'll do a lot better, but the issues don't allow that. I've noticed that, you know, after reading that book, women especially like it when you ask them about themselves. It gives you a great opportunity to just kind of sit back and just mm -hmm. think about other things. You just and once in a while, there's a moment and then you just ask him another question. Ask her if she agrees with you. Do, do you agree? <laughs> do you talking? like this? <laughs> Did you say something, Jesse? <laughs> um, there's one thing women don't like is they don't like you trying to talk, talk over their heads or talk down to them, whatever it is. What do you mean by talking over their heads? Uh, well, what Bill that Clinton mean? said that Democrats need to stop asserting that the economy is great. They did it all the way through the election cycle and it killed them. Right. You know, there was a moment shortly before Election Day when Joe Scarborough in his morning show said, oh, I couldn't believe it. My buddy called and said, butter's three bucks at the store. And his <laughs> wife taps him and was like, Joe, it's like seven. Yeah. You know, look, yep. and that <laughs> women know the price of food. They do most of the grocery shopping. I know a lot of men do too. And they don't appreciate people keep telling them the economy's great when prices are up 20, 25%. This was one of the biggest problems leading up to election day. It's the economy stupid. And so when they kept telling everybody everything was great, women at home were going, wait, what? I just got back from the grocery store and my normal, Hundred dollar grocery thing was a hundred and whatever. What's twenty percent more? <laughs> You're on FBI. I don't know. Hundred and twenty dollars. Yeah. <laughs> All this wisdom from Slick Willie. Where was this a year ago? <laughs> Two years ago, when everybody was really dealing with these high prices. Well, the problem is, is 
that oh boy. Bill Clinton, because he's a, a bit of a walking Me Too violation, gets ignored by a lot of people. And frankly, he had the best advice in 2016 for Hillary's team, and they didn't take it. Mm. And he had the best advice for Kamala's team, and they didn't take it. Mm. So in 2016, he was like, Hillary hasn't been to Wisconsin, guys. We need to win Wisconsin. We lose. This time around, he went to the team, so says the autopsy reporting after the election, and he said the Charlemagne ad is resonating with people. We have to say something. And I also pointed out that it wasn't just an ad about trans people. It was an economic ad because the argument was, we'll spend money on this special interest group, but we will not spend money on you, the general American taxpayer. And they didn't want to say anything about it. And if we live in an endless cycle and of recycling people that have run past campaigns and listen, what the Obama team was able to pull off is incredible. I think David Pluff and Stephanie Cutter are amazing. But why wouldn't you listen to a guy who won two elections, who is beloved by people? Have you watched him walk a rope line? Oh. I mean, people are beside themselves that they're so excited to meet him and to get to, to spend time with him. And he has decent advice. Well, you said the reason why is because he was me too Well, he wasn't me too well, I, you just said <laughs> people don't listen to him because he was Me Too. Maybe the lesson well, Jessica, is yeah. even people that are Me Too deserve to be listened to. Yeah. Equal rights me too. for Me Too. Me Too. Yeah. Me Too. I'm glad we've had that talk. I would say two things. I'd say we can't keep asserting that things are great in the economy. In some senses, they are great. But first of all, we're saddled with some cost of living challenges, which are not unique to the United States. But it's pretty hard if you're out there in the middle of the country and you're working hard and you've got two or three kids and you have to watch every penny you make. And, and secondly, the economic benefits of the current recovery have been widely shared where it has stuck. All right, before you get too excited over that, like, oh, mansplaining the truth and everything else, just a short time ago, while campaigning for Vice President Kamala Harris, Bill Clinton admitted the economy was bad, but to vote for Kamala Harris anyway. anyway Let's watch. Yeah. Yeah. I don't think it's right to say that people have to vote for Donald Trump because the economy was better there. Boy, there are some political games being played on the left right now. Like, we don't have the tape of what they said 15 days ago. Yeah, you know... When I was concerned, you know, what does the get out the vote look like? Are Republicans up to par? Because the reporting was all Democrats have this great GOTV. A dad said to me, hey, Kaylee, the get out the vote is inflation. And it turned out to be 100 percent correct. That was the tailwind that sent people to the polls. But there was this great debate playing out in the Democratic Party all the way back to the State of the Union with Biden. He was saying, you know, inflation is coming down. Jobs are going up. The economy's great. And political advisors were telling him, please do not say that, Mr. President. <laughs> Kamala comes on, rides in on her you know, big golden horse and starts saying, I get it. Prices are too high. Let's go after price gouging. That did not work. And what are they going to say when Donald Trump, I believe, will create a roaring economy? Are they then going to try to tell us the economy is bad? I mean, there's just this whiplash and it's just cognitive dissonance for America. Well, what are they going to say when they have to, to fix inflation again? Because it ticked up two Fridays ago right after the election. I mean, this was just I, I, they were lying. They yes. were lying to the American public that Lie. things were going to get better Lie. under Kamala Harris. That's right. And I, I think that the, what makes this so easy to see now as well uh, is because the American people voted quite clearly with common sense. So this wasn't sort of a, a nuanced, you know, two party like, well, we have different approaches to this economic system and how it'll. There was one side that was sort of the clearly large majority of America that said we are sick of inflation. And here's exactly how we can address it by by. Lim eliminating regulations by fostering entrepreneurship by by stop saddling the federal the heavy federal bloat by stop wasting our tax dollars through waste and fraud and abuse and also ridiculous but like the, the answers were clear and so for the american people to be told no no don't believe your pocketbooks don't believe the stress you have at the grocery store or with your families you're shrinking 401k and the like and then listen to me as we change our minds and flip flop no bill clinton just talking common sense and that's what everyone had, and that's what everyone hopes yeah. that we can now get back to, thanks to President-elect Donald Trump. But when the election was on the line, he was willing to lie about it. Well, that's of right. course. He I saw mean, it. Everybody saw that for themselves. That's how he was a two-term president. I mean, it's, it, there's one thing he knows how to do. 
It's lie. But and he had a good economy, Bill Clinton. Well, he, he did. And it doesn't matter if she's got certain metrics that are working well for certain people or that are good by comparison to countries Rich in people. Western Europe. That doesn't matter if you can't afford things. And that's what she didn't appropriately acknowledge. You know, she would shift a little bit here and there and it rallies and in speeches. She would say, yeah, things have gotten really expensive the last three years, huh? And it's like, you've been vice president. Yeah. You are number two in this administration. It is your policies and your bad post-COVID policy that created this environment. And we are the ones who have to live with it. And the people who can't afford to live with it anymore, they're the ones who voted them out of office. It's so, so true. It, 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 yep. But this is not the first time he had the same advice for Hillary Clinton in 2016, his wife and she wouldn't take his advice. So do I think he's the greatest politician ever? No, but he knows how to lie to get elected. She was not smart enough to talk herself out of a paper bag full of skeptics. Well, and now Bill Clinton <laughs> tells the truth about how bad it is and what kind of hole that Democrats have to dig themselves out of and get ready in two years to fight for at least one chamber of, of Congress if they can do that in 2026. Can't have well, a 90s playbook to do that, though. And, yeah, and that's right. still what they're operating with. Nope. So, Ian, you know, when you, when you look at the total picture here, the, the infrastructure of the argument still for Democrats is catch up. They're, they're catching up to what Americans were already feeling, as, as we've all laid out here. They're catching up with how to turn things around, and now it's not in their hands. And they still want you to believe that they can do it, but then those higher inflation rates come out from two Fridays ago. And last I checked, Biden and Harris are still in office. Like, they, if they were going to fix it for Legacy Point, fix it now. They because, can't. Because their policies don't allow them to fix it. I mean, their policies are the reason why we're here. But I'll, I'll say on, on Clinton, you know, look, he, you can say what you want about Clinton. He was a savvy politician in his yeah. prime, right? And I've got this visual of that, that Bill Clinton has been in solitary confinement at the DNC. And every once in a while, they'll let him out to go talk. And then he'll say something that's not quite on message, and they put him back in. And I think he escaped. And I think he's like, that's it. I'm done. I'm done with these people. I'm actually going to, like, I don't want my legacy as a savvy politician to go down with Kamala Harris and this version of the Democrat Party. So I'm going to actually go tell the truth for once. Well, and somebody who really understood the power of the economy and the power of the vote and how connected those two things. Are. Right. I feel your pain. Exactly. Bill Clinton. So he, he got it. And he realizes if they don't get it this time, they'll just continue to lose. I mean, it's, it's just, it really is insidious. Well, I mean, they just haven't learned the lesson from the election. Sure, there's, uh, you know, occasional Democrats out there, like Seth Moulton will come out and, and say something, and then, of course, he'll get canceled. But by and large, Democrats have not learned what this election was about. Yeah, and they're going to continue to Seth make these mistakes. Talking now against transgender and, and yeah. sports or whatever he's spewing, although he yeah. voted for the Bill of, of Rights to transgender in his state. Okay. So <sighs> much to be